classroom energizers. Number one, four corners. If you have your classroom, one of the students is blindfolded and standing in the middle of the class. The other students have to go and stand in one of the four corners. This blindfolded student shouts out a number and all the students in that number are out. If there aren't many students left, you can reduce the number of corners there are. For example, there are only three corners left. The students can only stand in one of those three corners. You can also make a rule like they can't stand in the same corner, especially for friends who always stand together. This continues until there is only one winner and they become the new leader who picks. This is a really fun game that is easy to play in any classroom. Classroom energizers number two, A and B. First, let the students write down their names twice. One for A and one for B. Put them into a basket and then all the students have to pick out an A and a B name, but not their own. Then, once you give the go, the students have to move away from student B and get as close as possible to student A that they have. They have to do it in secret. To keep the class under control, remember to tell them that there is no running and no pushing. This is a fun game that you can play and at the end you say stop and you see where everyone is and you can ask the students who is their person A and who is their person B to see how far away they got from person B and how close they got to person A. Classroom energizers number three, wiggles. Let the students stand up behind their desks and slowly start walking in place. Then they have to start wiggling their fingers. After that, step number two, they have to wiggle their hands and their fingers. When you say three, they have to do their wrists, their fingers and their hands while slowly walking. Continue and say number four, arms. After number four, five, shoulders, arms, fingers, then their heads, their chests, their rib cages, their waists, and then also their legs. Then you take it back and you say, okay, let your legs be normal, your waist, your rib cage, your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands and your fingers and stop. This is a great activity if you want to energize your classroom. It is very silly, but the students will love it. If you would like to have all these activities and resources, I put a link to the book in the description below. Classroom energizer number four, litter box. Students work with a partner and they need some kind of paper on the floor. Working with their partner, they have to pick up the paper and drop it onto their table. You have to shout out what body parts they should use. So for example, they have to use uh, their wrist and their elbow to pick it up. It could be elbow to elbow, foot to foot, knee to knee, forearm to elbow, foot to elbow, forehead to back of hand. Whatever you can think of, let them do it together. A great variation you can use is to put it in a team relay where students have to work as a group or they can work as individuals and the first team to finish wins. Classroom energizer number five, as if. You have to be creative and tell the students to mimic what you tell them to do. For example, they should jog in place as if a scary bear is chasing them. Walk as if you are walking through pudding. Jump in place like your popcorn popping. Pop, pop, pop. Reach up and grab balloons out of the air. Make sure there is enough space for your students and tell them not to jump into anyone or anything. You don't want any injuries. You just want them to have fun and let go of some of that energy that they've got pent up. March in place and play the drums like you're in a marching band. Paint as if the paintbrush is attached to your forehead. Swim as if you're being chased by sharks. Swim as if you're in a giant pool of yogurt. Shake your body as if you're a wet dog. 
it will get the student's imagination going. Students can act out these fun activities for 20 seconds. You can even put them into groups and ask them to write their own activities, which you can use in the future. Classroom Energizer number six, Banana Game. Pick one student and the other students stand around that leader. That leader closes their eyes and then you take an object like a banana or a toy and you hand it to the students. They have to hide it and send it around and pass it along to each other without the leader finding out. The leader can guess who it is and then if they are correct, they switch with that person. This is an easy game and the students enjoy it a lot. You can also tell the students that they can fake giving it to each other. Once again, you don't want the students running around or throwing things, but you want them to have fun with this activity. If you would like to have all these activities and resources, I put a link to the book in the description below. Classroom Energizer number seven, yoga poses or morning routine. You can use simple yoga poses for your students to hold for a minute or 30 seconds. That's a great way for them to calm down or a good way for them to prepare for the day ahead. A morning routine helps your students stretch and be ready physically for the class ahead. They can do jumping jacks, knee lifts, flap their arms like a bird, hopping, reach for the sky, runners stretch, rotate their ankles and wrists and necks. Repeat these simple activities to physically prepare them for the day ahead or when they need a break during the day. Classroom Energizer number eight, name tag. Get all your students to stand in an open area and then ask them to write their names onto a post-it note. Then take all the post-it notes from them and redistribute them. They have to then put the post-it note on their friends back to the right of them. After that, say go and the students have to try and find their own name. They walk around, tell them no running, they walk around and look for their name. They take their name and then put it on their chest. Then they win. Students have to go around until everyone has found their name. You could also play some variations where as soon as you get your name, you're out. This is a really easy and fun game to play with your students. Just make sure they don't get too excited while playing it. Classroom Energizer number nine. 10 second object. Split your class into smaller groups. Then you have to give them an object or phrase that they have to try and build using their bodies. The best group gets a point and they've only got 10 seconds. This is a fun team building activity and it helps the students to think on their feet. So give them a word like the North Pole, give them 10 seconds and then they have to construct the closest body of the North Pole. After 10 seconds, shout freeze. You look at all the different groups and you give them a point. It can be something simple or it could be a phrase or a sentence. It's up to you what you want them to construct. These energizers and activities are great as icebreakers or when the students have low energy to pick up the mood, or if you just want to use some team building exercises. If you would like to have all these activities and resources, I put a link to the book in the description below. Classroom Energizer number 10, Shazam. This is like rock, paper, scissors, except you have knights, wizards, and giants. Put the students into groups. Together they have to decide what they want to be. Do they want to be a giant, a wizard, or a knight? And then they have to act it out. Wizards beat knights. Knights beat giants. Giants beat wizards. So once they've picked what they want to be, you count down three, two, one, and all the groups have to act out what they are in unison. For example, the wizards have to say, Shazam! The giants have to say, Fee, Fi, Fo, Fum. Knights have to say, 
in guard and take out their swords. This is a fun way for the students to work as a team and also have a lot of fun. Classroom Energizer 11, Miming. Miming is a fantastic way for students to use TPR in the classroom. So you can tell them, I want you to mime actions. I want you to mime animals. I want you to mime whatever you can think of. For example, when it comes to sports, you can say, I want you to do a jumping shot. I want you to juggle soccer balls, dance like a ballerina, swing a golf club, downhill skiing, serving a tennis ball, shooting an arrow, batting a baseball. Use miming in your class to make a connection between the word uh, or the phrase and the meaning so that they can internalize the language in their own lives. Classroom Energizer 12. Miming a lie. Ask the students what they are doing. They have to mime one thing but say another. For example, if they say, I'm serving a tennis ball, but they mime swinging a baseball bat. This is, is going to be really fun and difficult for them at first, but you'll see how they adapt and how fun it is for them to do later. The students have a great time by watching their friends trying to lie and mime at the same time. Classroom Energizer 13. Line up. Ask your students to stand next to a wall. Then they have to arrange themselves according to their height. After that, you can check them and then ask them to rearrange themselves according to their telephone number or alphabetically according to their name or according to their birthday. You can use anything you can think of for them to rearrange themselves. Playing games and using fun activities in the classroom is a great way to keep your students engaged. If you would like to have all these activities and resources, I put a link to the book in the description below. Classroom Energizer number 14. Animal Roundup. Ask your students to think of an interesting animal. Don't make it too easy. Then they have to mime the animal. Without using words, they have to show their friends what their animal looks like. Then Ask your students to stand next to a wall and arrange themselves by the animal's size. But once again, they can't tell their friends what animal they are. They have to show and mime what the animal looks like and how big it is. Afterwards, you can ask your students what their animals were. It's usually really fun to see what kind of animals they are. Some of them come out with some strange animals that nobody has heard about. Classroom Energizer 15. Rock, paper, scissors evolution. This is a great activity. Students start off as eggs. They have to find other eggs to play rock, paper, scissors against. They move around as eggs. Once they win a match, they move up to chicken. Chickens have to cluck and find other chickens to play against. Once they win, they become dinosaurs and they have to move around like dinosaurs until they find another dinosaur to fight against. Dinosaurs then move up and become monkeys. Monkeys move around like monkeys until they find another monkey to fight against. If they lose a match, they do not devolve. They stay where they are until they win another game. But once they reach human, they can only play against other humans. Once they lose at human, they go all the way back to egg and they have to start from the beginning. But if you are a human and you play rock, paper, scissors against another human, you move up to champion and you win. This is a fantastic game that the students love. Classroom Energizer 16. Human Knot. You know this game. It's a really fun game. Ask the students to stand in a circle. Then they have to take the hand of someone not directly to their right and not directly to their left. They hold their hands and now they have to untangle the knot. But they cannot let their hands go. They can release their grips a little bit to make it easier to move around. There are a couple of ways to solve the knot. 
Sometimes they will be in a figure eight, sometimes they will be a circle inside another circle, or they will have a big circle with some students facing in or out. This is an easy way if you've got a big group to waste a couple of minutes. Classroom Energizer 17. Throw and catch. If you have something to throw and catch, preferably something soft, ask the students to write some words on the board. Then, if they have the ball or the toilet paper, they have to say a word and then throw it to a partner who has to make a sentence using that word. It's really good to check up on some vocabulary or if you want to practice some new words. To make it easier for the students, write it on the board first, give them some examples to practice with, and then play the game. This game is super useful in the classroom if you want to practice any vocabulary or you want students to answer something. Students love throwing, they love catching, and if you can utilize points in some way, better for you. It's good if you've got teams and if they drop the ball, they lose some points or if they catch it and they give a good sentence, they get plus one or plus two. Classroom Energizer 18. Writing in the air. Ask students to write their names in the air using their right hand, using their left hand. Then you can put students into groups. Each group has to have a list of 10 words that you give them and one person standing in front at the board. The students then have to write it in the air and the student has to copy it onto the board. The first team to finish wins. Another variation is for students to use their bodies to make the letters. For example, if they have to make the word coconut, they can try and mime coconut. This is a fun game that gets the students engaged. Classroom Energizer 19. Sevens. This is an easy game. Students have to count up as far as they can without using seven or multiples of seven. So instead of saying the word seven, they have to use another word or perhaps a noun. For example, one, two, three, four, five, six, tree, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, mouse, 15, 16, chair, where are we? 18, 19, 20, light, and so on. The first one to make a mistake loses a point and you have to restart. This is an easy game that you can use in your class and the students really get into it because you can go faster, you can make up words, it's very interesting. Use these classroom energizers and activities with your class to improve the students' engagement and to have a fun lesson. If you would like to see more tips and activities for teachers, please like and subscribe. I'm Eric from Edicude and I'll see you next time. Classroom Energizer 20. Mingle. Ask students to walk around. They just walk around, bounce around. And then when you say a number, they have to make a group with that number. So they're marching around and you say the number two. So they have to form pairs. If you say three, they have to be three in a group. Four, four. If a student is left out, they are out. You can also use another variation where you write a number on the board, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then they have to do an action with that number. So if it's number one, they have to sit back to back with someone. If it's number two, they have to stand with toes touching. Three, they sit in a circle. Four, they have to sit on their chair. It's really up to you on how to use it. This is also a great way to train the students to do what you want them to do in class by giving them the numbers and then playing it as a game. Classroom Energizer 21. I love my neighbors. First, let the students write some ideas on the board of what people are. So for example, some people are girls, boys, people with braces, people with glasses, tall people, short people, people that wear jackets, pe people that wear the color red. So let them write down a list of interesting things that people have. Then students make a circle and put a pencil in front of them with one student in the middle. The student in the middle has to say something. I love my neighbors who are girls. 
all the girls have to find a new pencil to stand in front of, but they cannot stand at a pencil directly next to them. They have to find a different pencil. The one student who is out without a pencil, they become the new leader. This is an interesting game and I think the students really enjoy this. Just make sure that they don't bump into each other or fight when they run around. We want our students to be safe when they're having fun and moving around the class. Classroom Energizer 22. Awesome adjectives. Each person thinks of an adjective that starts with their name. For example, I am exciting Eric. Then the next person says, I am magnificent Michelle and he is exciting Eric. Next person, I am jolly James, he is exciting Eric, she is I forgot, I'm out. The students go around the circle and see if they can remember everyone's adjectives. This is a fun way for the students to get to know each other. Another variation is to use actions. For example, I am Eric, I like to exercise. I am Michelle, I like to move. He is Eric, he likes to exercise. And so on. Classroom Energizer 23. 20 countdown. Students close their eyes and they have to count down from 20 to 1. But only one person at a time can count down. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 17. If two students say the same number at the same time, you have to restart. You can also make it the number of students there are in a class. For example, if there are 16 students, they can start at 16 and try and get down to one. This is an easy time waster that you can use in the class and they love it when they get close. It's very stressful. Another thing you can do to make it even more difficult is that once they get to zero, the final student has to say victory. That puts them all on edge once they start getting down to zero. This is a fun but frustrating game at times. It is fantastic though once the students reach victory. Classroom Energizer 24. Blind drawing. One student closes their eyes, then you draw something on the board. Students then have to explain to their friend what you drew on the board and they've got to copy the drawing on the board. The team that gets the closest picture wins. Remember to take a photo of your drawing before you erase it to show the students what it actually looked like. For example, you can draw a boat or you can draw an animal, you can draw an action and the students have to explain what's going on. This is limited to your own imagination, so make it interesting and let the students have fun explaining to their friend. Classroom Energizer 25. Telephone. Now you know telephone. Students line up and you tell the student at the back of the line a sentence that they have to retell and pass forward. And that goes to the first person in line who then has to retell the sentence. It's really fun because you see how the sentence changes over time. Another thing you can do is you can show them an action. For example, driving a bike, turning left, doing a willy and then they have to show that to the person in front of them and that carries on to the person that is first in line and they have to show everyone what the action was. They can also see how messages change over time as they pass along. So we have to emphasize how important it is to communicate clearly. These energizers and activities are great as icebreakers or when the students have low energy to pick up the mood, or if you just want to use some team building exercises. If you would like to have all these activities and resources, I put a link to the book in the description below. Classroom activity 26. Psychic. Usually we ask the students to introduce themselves to a partner, but now I want them to be a psychic. Look at your partner, and instead of asking them questions, I want you to make statements that you think about them. 
for example, you look at what your friend is wearing and you can say, I think you like to read. I think you like to have fun. I think you are very sociable. I think you like spaghetti. You can say anything about your partner that you can guess. You can also talk about someone's future. I think in the future you will become a fireman. I think in the future you will become very rich. So you can talk about your partner's past. I think you went on a trip to another country before. Or you can say, I think you love playing computer games. You can talk about their situation right now, who they are as a person. Or you can make a guess about what they will do in the future. It's really fun guessing things about your partner. Especially if the students don't know each other yet, this is a good way for them to practice saying what they think. Classroom activity. 27. Apples to Apples. Apples to Apples is a fun game where students have to say a sentence and then their friends in the group have to try and give the funniest or the best possible answer. They take these answers randomly and then decide on the best one. For example, if you have these cards, you have some fun sentences like, at night I become a... <laughs> And some student might say, baby, submarine, stick of dynamite. And then you say, uh, I think baby is the funniest. Who said baby? And that student wins. If you don't have the cards, I've got a list of funny sentences in the book that you can find in the description. Also, the students can say these sentences and then their friends can write the answer on a piece of paper, fold it up, give it to the person reading it, they shuffle it and decide which one is the best. Then it's the next person to read a sentence. This is a great game and I've had a, a lot of success with this in the classroom. Check out the book in the description if you would like those sentences. Classroom activity 28. Yes, no, opposites. Students work in pairs. Student A has to ask student B questions. Student B has to always say the opposite or they have to lie. For example, did you drink cola? No, I didn't drink cola. But I saw you today. No, you didn't see me. Where were you today then? I was on the moon. Students have to lie or they have to say the opposite of yes or no. For a couple of minutes, students have to try and get their partner to make a mistake and then they switch. Make sure that students don't repeat the same answer over and over again. And if you are asking your partner questions, try and trap them with a trick question or go faster and faster. Classroom activity 29. What's different? This is a really fun group game. Split the class into two teams. Line them up to face each other. Tell them to look at the other team to make sure they notice all the details. Then one team looks away and the other team has to change things about themselves. They can switch places, they can exchange jackets, they can untie their shoes, untie some buttons, they can switch their watch from one wrist to the, the other. Anything they want to do to make some changes in their group. Then once this group turns around, they have to spot all the changes that they have seen in this group. It's a really fun activity because students love trying to trick each other and fool the other team. Classroom activity 30. Don't answer. Students sit in a circle, then one student stands up, goes to another one and asks them a question. What's your most annoying habit? They may not answer, but the person to their left may answer for them. This is a really fun activity because the students can use their imagination to ask fun questions and come up with creative answers. Once they've answered, then that student who was asked can stand up and ask someone else. This is a really great activity to spend a couple of minutes. Classroom activity 31. Spy group. Put the students into groups. Each group has to create some kind of movement or special rule for their group. 
So for example, before you can answer, you have to touch your chin or you have to sit a specific way or you have to make a noise at some point. Make a special rule for each group. As the teacher, you will walk around and check and make sure what their rule is so that it's not too difficult and it's fun. Then one person from each group has to visit another group. They have a conversation, the students chat to each other. After a couple of minutes, they move to a new group and a new group. And then finally, each spy moves to back to their original group and shares the information. They talk about it and then you try and see if each group figured out what the other group's special rule was. This is an interesting activity because it's all up to the students what rules they make, what they talk about and if they can keep it from the spy within their conversation. You can use a variation of this where some students go outside when they come back they have to try and figure out what the special rule is that the class has. Classroom activity 32. Who's the leader? One or two students leave the class and then the class has to decide or the groups have to decide who's the leader. Once the student comes back into the class, they will ask the class some questions. The class has to look towards the leader and then secretly do moves that the leader makes. So for example, if the leader sits like this, everybody else has to copy the leader, but they have to try and keep it secret. The detective has to try and guess who the leader is. This is an easy game. You can do it with the whole class or you can just put them into groups and do it like that. Classroom activity 33. Crazy cubes. Sometimes students struggle to use the right prepositions when giving instructions. Play crazy cubes to help them practice prepositions. Write down some words. You'll write cube one, book, pen, backpack, eraser, marker and paper. And then on cube two, you can write some places on the floor, the teacher's desk, chair, a friend's desk, the dustbin or the door. Then students line up. You can even split them into teams if you want to make it more competitive. And then one student has to throw the dice twice and then give instructions for their partner. For example, if they throw a one and a four, then they have to tell their partner, place your book on your friend's desk. And then when they throw it again, place your pencil next to the chair. It's even more fun for the students if you place them in teams and they have to compete with each other to finish first. Classroom activity 34. Be unique. Ask all the students to stand up. Then each student has to say something that is unique to them. For example, I have three brothers. Once they say that, if somebody else also has three brothers, that unique student has to sit down. This helps them think about some experiences that they've had or things that might be unique to them. It's a great way for students to share things that are inherently unique to them. They can talk about past experiences that they've had, places they've been, things about their family, or they can talk about skills that might be unique to them. Let the students share these things. It also helps the students to think about why they are unique, what makes them special and to celebrate that. Playing games and using fun activities in the classroom is a great way to keep your students engaged. I recommend using these games and activities to spice up your class and to get your students engaged in the material they are studying. Classroom activity 35. The perfect world. Place students into groups or with a partner. Then they have to discuss and then create their perfect world. It could include world peace. Every week everyone gets a free pizza. There is no school and everyone can play the whole day. It is up to the pair or the group what they think their perfect world is. Once they're done, they have to present their perfect world to the class and then the class votes on who has the perfect world. It's up to you whether it should be based in reality or they can 
include fantasy elements like everybody has a superpower or could fly or no one dies. I think this is a fun way for the students to be creative and to think what they really want in life. Classroom activity 36. Questions board game. I found this board game on Talktastic with many different topics. Put the students into pairs or into groups and then they have to throw a dice and try and make it all around the board game. They also have to practice asking questions. I know that a lot of teachers ask me, Eric, I've got some issues with students struggling to ask why, who, what, when. So this board game can really help students practice asking questions. So for example, if they land on a topic like teacher, you can ask, who is your teacher? Why do you like that teacher? When do you see that teacher? Get them to practice these five W's and one H. What I like to do with my students too is to get them to ask follow-up questions. So once a student answers a question, their partner should ask them a follow-up. Classroom activity 37. Dinner party. First, make a list of 10 famous people. They can include any celebrities, politicians, sports stars, singers, artists, whoever you want to make the list with your students. Then put them into groups and tell the groups that there will be a dinner party with these 10 famous people as guests. It is up to the groups to decide the seating arrangements around a table for these 10 celebrities. They have to make sure that the celebrities are placed next to someone they can talk to. They won't be bored. They might have similar interests. What will they talk about? Which celebrities might not like each other? And they have to make the seating arrangement. Once they're done, let the students present their table setting to the class and explain why the celebrities are going to sit where they sit. Make sure that your students justify why the celebrities are in certain places and they are able to explain themselves. Classroom activity 38. What's my problem? First, write down some common problems that students face. It could be that they don't get enough sleep or it could be that they always fight with their brother or it could be that they don't study for a test. Write down all these problems on the board. While you write out these problems, let some students write it down on post-it notes as you are writing it down on the board. Once you've got enough problems for all the students in the class, take these notes and randomly place them on a student's back. Then the class mingles. They walk around and ask their friends, what's my problem? Their friend takes a look at their problem and then gives them advice. They may not tell them directly what their problem is, but they should give some advice. And from that advice, the student can figure out what their problem is. Maybe you should always pack your bag at night. At the end of the activity, they can guess what their problem is. Classroom activity 39, the m, &M game. I've played this game a lot. In a group, give them a small packet of M&Ms. And once they pick an M&M, they have to talk about a certain topic for one minute before they can eat that M&M. Now, what do they talk about? It depends on the color of the M&M. If it's blue, they talk about a hobby. If it's brown, they talk about a wish they have. Yellow is about their family or their friends. Orange is about a vacation they took in the past. And red is about anything they want to talk about. This is a great activity for the students to get to know each other or if you just want to share some treats with them. Classroom activity 40. A day in the life. Put the students into groups. They play rock, paper, scissors. And that student has to leave the room. Then the group has to make up a fictitious schedule for the students about what they did that day. You can write it on the board, for example, a day in the life. So what did that student do from eight to 12, 12 to two, two to six, six to 10 and 10 to 12? It doesn't have to be 100% correct. Tell them to make it fun and interesting and write it down somewhere. Then the student comes back into the class 
and he or she has to guess what they did during that time period. If they wrote down from 8 to 12, he went scuba diving. When he comes back, he has to ask them questions to figure out what he did. So he can ask yes or no questions. He can ask specific members. He can ask the whole group. This is a fun way for the students to think about their schedules and to imagine what they could do with their time. Classroom activity 41. Where's my present? First, get the students to draw a toy. It could be any toy they really want or just an interesting toy. Here's my toy, for example. You should really be happy that I'm not an art teacher. Then you fold up the toy and you hand them out to random students in the class. They look at the toy and they keep it safe. Then the students have to mingle around and ask questions. Have you seen a toy that looks like a human? Have you seen my toy? It is made out of metal. If you have younger learners that drew in color, you can say, oh, have you seen my toy? It is gray. The students walk around and they ask questions. Until they are sure they found their toy, then you say, have you seen my robot? And then the student hands them their robot. This is a really good activity for the students to have fun and ask good questions. Classroom activity 42. It's a deal. In negotiations, there is a clear objective and a desired result. Therefore, negotiations are inherently stimulating. It's also a great way for learners to practice explaining themselves or argue their ideas. Place the learners in pairs and ask them to practice one conversation for every category. Once they are done, let some of the pairs perform a negotiation in front of class. Parents and children, they can talk about homework, uh, dinner, bedtime, pocket money, uh, chores, staying at a friend's house or what birthday presents they want. Boyfriends and girlfriends, where to go for dinner, what to watch, spending time with other people, who should we visit for Christmas. For husbands and wives, uh, what chores should they do, uh, the budget, looking after kids, dealing with problems with relatives, teachers and students. The amount of homework, classroom behavior, uh, what they should learn in class and the classroom rules. Employers and employees, working hours, salary, job description, their responsibilities, how much holiday do they get, what benefits or asking for a promotion. For political leaders, they can talk about war, international agreements, exporting, defense. Between a landlord and a tenant, they can agree on the rent. They can talk about the house condition, what should be done if there's a problem at home, how to fix it. A police officer and a witness making deals, offering protection. They can also have a police officer and a criminal, which also could be fun. A quick warning, I have seen many learners take role plays and simulations seriously. Remember, it's about taking part, not about winning. Classroom activity 43. The most. First, place students into pairs. With their partner, they should create a list of 10 questions they can ask about the most. What is the most interesting place you've been to? What was your worst subject at school? What is the tallest building you've been in? Who is the strangest person you've ever met? What is the greatest problem in the world today? Then, once those pairs have their questions, they should walk around class and ask other students some of these questions. Remember to get them to ask follow-up questions too. So they can ask, what is the most money you've spent in a day? And then they can ask a follow-up question after that. They can ask each person three questions and move on to the next person. This is a great activity to practice superlatives. And it also gives individualized answers for each student. When you're done, take feedback from your students. Ask them what are some interesting answers or questions that they've heard. Classroom activity 44. Erase the dialogue. Many students aren't very confident when it comes to speaking out in class and they prefer having a script to read from. 
But that is a problem because they rely on the script as a crutch. So what can you do? Write down a dialogue and then you start erasing some of the parts so that they memorize it and they can use it more naturally. This will also boost their confidence. Let's take a look at how it's done. So you put the students into pairs and they have to read the dialogue once. What are you doing this evening? Nothing much. Why? Would you like to have a cup of coffee? I'd love to. What time? How about 6.30? Great. See you then. Then you erase some of the parts. Maybe you erase this part and you erase this part. Then you get the students to read the dialogue again. After that, you can erase some more. This is a fun way for students to gain more confidence and to learn. After they've done it, you can erase more and more and more until nothing is left. You can do it a little bit at a time or you can do it a line at a time. This is a great way for students to gain confidence and to practice dialogue. I recommend using these games and activities to spice up your class and to get your students engaged in the material they are studying. If you would like to have all these activities and resources, I put a link to the book in the description below. Classroom activity 45, guided group storytelling. Split the class into groups of four students. Each group builds a story together and each student gets a chance to build towards the story. Write this sentence on the board. There was an old lady living in a house in the forest with her granddaughter. Each student should describe a part of the story. The first student should describe the old lady. What does she look like? Who is she? What does she do? Student B will describe the house. What does the house look like? Is it big? Is it small? What are some characteristics of the house? Student C will describe the forest. Is it a big forest? Is it dark? Is it friendly? Are there many flowers, animals? And then student D should describe the granddaughter. What is her name? What does she look like? What is her personality? What does she do at the house? Then continue the story. One day, a young man knocked at the door. What does he look like? Who is he? Where is he from? Why is he at the house? And then finish the story. Each student adds one sentence until it's complete. Once they finish the story, place all the groups into new groups where each individual student has to retell the story to their new group. This is a great way for students to collectively build a story and then afterwards share that story with other students. Classroom activities 46. Alibi. There's been a murder. The class has to find out who is responsible. So depending on the class size, you can pick two students or three students or four students. They have to go outside the classroom and work on an alibi. Where were they? What were they doing? If they were eating at a restaurant, what restaurant? What were they eating? They have to figure out the details and talk about it. While they are outside, make a corresponding number of groups. So if you have three students outside, there should be three groups. And then ask these three groups to think of questions they can ask to try and find the murderer. To help the groups, you can even let them write down some of the questions so that they are prepared for when the students come inside. So when the students come back to class, each one of them goes to a group and the group interrogates them and asks them questions about what they were doing, who they were with. After a couple of minutes, they switch and then they switch again so that each group interrogates all the students that went outside to work on their alibis. Once they are done, you can ask the students who was the worst liar? Who do they think it is? If you would like to have all these activities and resources, I put a link to the book in the description below. Classroom activity 47. Things in common. Place the students into pairs. Their goal is to find out some interesting things that they have in common with their partner. So they can talk about hobbies, experiences, 
places they've been, things they've done, things about their lives, their families. They should find three interesting things that they have in common. Once they are done, they can share that with the class. Another way you can do it is by building a Venn diagram of things that one student does that's unique to them and another student. And then in the middle, you can place things they have in common. You can even put the students into groups of three so that you know what they have in common, all of them, or what they have in common with one or the other. This is a good activity because we should celebrate the things we have in common and not just focus on the differences. The students can make friends and they can get closer with these things that they have in common. Classroom activity 48. Secret word. Students have to make a simple presentation on an easy topic, but they have to add an interesting word. First, ask the students to write down some ideas for topics. It could be food, sports, hobbies, anything simple. And they write it down on a piece of paper. Then, ask your students to look up an interesting word. For example, you can write down superficial, and then let the student write down their name too. You could also give the students words that they have to add in there if you don't think they can do it by themselves. You take these topics and you take these secret words, you hide them, and then you hand them out to the students. Each student should prepare a short one or two minute presentation or speech on the topic, but they have to hide the secret word inside the speech. Then, they present their speeches to the class. Once they are done, the other students have to nominate some words which they think are the secret word. That means that they have to listen intently to find out what words sound a little bit out of place. As the teacher, you write the nominated words on the board and the class has to vote. If they pick the wrong word, then the presenter wins. This is great because students can practice doing presentations and they don't feel that stressed about it because they focus on the secret word they have to hide. There are many strategies they can use. They can hide it within the topic or they can use many different words to try and confuse the class. This is a really fun activity and it really gets the best out of your students when they have to practice for presentations or speeches. Classroom activity. 49. What's the name again? Students are going shopping, but they forgot the name of the item they want to buy. So they have to try and explain what it does. Put the students into pairs. One person is the shopkeeper and the other is the potential buyer. Give the students a list of words that they have to try and explain. For example, Student A goes to the shopkeeper and asks, oh, do you have those things that you put into the sink to stop the water from draining? Do you have that thing that you pour water in and then you heat up? Do you have something to cut paper with? What's that thing people use to watch movies on? What is that thing you put water in to keep it hot or to keep water in to keep it cold? Then the shopkeeper can say, oh, do you want a thermos? You want to make sure that the students actually know what the item is, so keep it simple. Here is a list of basic items, but you can add your own. Classroom activity 50. If things were different. Place the students into groups. Then they have to think of a celebrity they know and write a list of what that celebrity has achieved. It could be a sports star, a singer, a politician, anyone that's very famous. Walk around and make sure that each group thinks of a different person. Then they report back about their celebrity, his or her accomplishments to the class. You can write the names on the board so that you can see who they've picked. Now, each group has to think of an alternative history for each celebrity. What would have happened if something happened differently in their lives or if they didn't achieve something that they did? Note that not each alternative history has to end in a disaster. They could just have become something else. When all the groups are done, 
they report back their alternate histories. The most creative or well-explained history gets a point. If they are a group of three or four students, make sure that each student gets a chance to explain some of that alternate history. This activity gets the students thinking out of the box and they also have to use some key grammar forms. These energizers and activities are great as icebreakers or when the students have low energy to pick up the mood or if you just want to use some team building exercises. So use these classroom energizers and activities with your class to improve the students engagement and to have a fun lesson. If you would like to see more tips and activities for teachers, please like and subscribe. I'm Eric from Edicude and I'll see you next time. Classroom activity 51. Deserted Island activity. First, ask your students to draw an item. Any object or any item. Uh, there we go. I drew this robot. <laughs> Once they are done, collect all the drawings and redistribute them randomly to all the students who look at their new items. Next, tell the students that they are stranded on a deserted island and only half of them can make it. The only thing they have is the item in the drawing and they have to convince the rest of the class why they should stay. So for example, if I got this robot, I would say, everyone, you have to keep me. I've got this robot. It can do chores for us. It can help us. It can chop wood. You should keep me in the class. This is a great way for the students to try and convince each other and to have fun. Classroom activity 52 secret zombie. You want to write a lot of H's for human and then maybe depending on your class size two or three Z's for zombies. Hand them out to your students and they have to keep it secret. Then tell them that they will mingle around and talk with other students. When they are in a conversation, if they are a zombie, they have to wink at the other person. They have to do it secretly so that nobody else notices. Then if they wink at that person, that person now becomes a zombie. So the zombies keep on multiplying. Once they wink to another person, that person is now a zombie. And then they continue until the conversation is over. And then you tell the students to find a new partner and continue the process. That way the zombies multiply. You can switch partners perhaps two or three times. And every time you are a zombie, you have to infect your partner. You can write some basic topics on the board. You can say, okay, everyone, I want you to talk about food. So when the students meet their partner, they talk about, oh, what's your favorite food? What did you eat last night? And then secretly wink. And now that friend is a zombie too. Then you say, stop. Now everyone find a new partner and I want you to talk about hobbies. They walk around, they find a new partner, they talk and if they are a zombie, they wink and then now that partner is a zombie too. Change partners two or three times, say stop and then ask your students, who is a zombie? Raise your hand and all the zombies have to raise their hands. It's really fun to see which students become zombies and the students also look out to see who might be winking. 